Hello, Kathy Nolan. Yes. This is Victor. Hi, Victor. Hi, Victor. This, this is the uh, Sir Bad Jim, the new Sir Bad Jim. And uh, we're doing interviews with most interesting people in the world, and you're one of them. <laughs> so so uh, I'd like you to introduce yourselves and uh, yourself and uh, a brief history of how you got to this point. Well, that's a challenge. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, you know, we've been, I guess we've been in Dolan Strings for about um, 18 years. And we moved here from Los Angeles where uh, my husband and I were both in the film industry doing different things. We came out here to see his parents and uh, we liked it so much we decided to stay. Oh, that's uh, it's a wonderful place to live. It is. It's a wonderful place to live. One one time you made a statement to me when you were young. Uh, you're from Minnesota, weren't you? Or I'm I'm from Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. That you that you had a door on the second story to the outside, and I asked you why in the world do you have a door out there? Yes, that's that's right. A lot of a lot of homes had double stories because there was so much snow that would be the only way you could get out. <laughs> that, that, that that astounds me. Well, it's it's very true. You know, there's a lot of reasons to move to California, and uh, the fact that they don't have snow, you know, six feet high is one reason. I <laughs> yeah. had lot I had lots of reasons. Oh, that makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, what did you do in the film industry? Uh, well, I worked in. Uh, well, I did several different things, but I did costume design. I was a seamstress, a tailor, a stitcher, uh, a shopper. I worked on set. Uh, there's a lot of things to do, a lot of lot of things to make a movie happen, and uh, it takes many, many crew members. Fred was also in the film industry. He was a dolly grip, and he moved the camera, but I got to see the actors before they were on camera. I put the clothes on him, and then when he got him, he got to film him. So it kind of was a, a, a great thing, and we um, we had that in common when we met, and uh, we've been together ever since. Um, you designed the clothes also? Uh, you know, I uh, there's a lot of people that do that. I designed what I could with the budget we had. So, uh, you know, I never, I, I didn't, I was never in charge of anything that was, you know, I didn't ha ever have millions of dollars. You know, I had a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars, and the dude, you, you, you do the best you can. So oh, you of course. Learn to be creative. Yeah. You learn to be creative. What are, some the, yeah. what are some of the movies you worked on? Well, Victor, you know, um, that's really hard uh, to say. I've, I've worked on hundreds. I can't even remember any of them, but, uh, you know, when you, I think about probably the biggest movie I worked on was something called Armageddon, and, uh, but I was one of a thousand people that worked on it. Uh-huh. So, uh, that was a lot of fun, it was a lot of work, it took a long time to film, and it cost a lot of money, but, uh, that was probably the biggest. And, uh, I did several miniseries, and, uh, worked on TV shows, and, uh, movies of the week. You know, uh, Fred did a lot of uh, um, tape shows where you have a half-hour sitcom, so he was right there live, shooting it live. And uh, it, it was a lot of fun, a lot of work. I don't miss it at all. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, did I don't you, miss it at all. Did you travel much? Um, I was fortunate enough to travel all over the country, uh, but I didn't... Uh, I, I was I did go to England, but that was for pleasure. I I didn't travel there to work, but uh, it it was you know it was great. The hours were long, the money was great, but you know how they say the more you make, the more they take. So <laughs> I'm I'm real happy. I'm real happy now. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I have a drink of water here. Oh, it's um, it's a good life in Dolan Springs. It is. No, it's a very good life. There's wonderful people here. No smog and good water. And yes. 
Yes. And, and good people. A lot of individualists. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I like that about here. And, uh, well, you know, we're fortunate to have a well, but uh, there's a lot of people that need to have water hauled for them because they don't have wells or they don't live on city water. So part of what our commitment here is not only can we, you know, do handyman stuff, help people with different things now in our lives because we're retired. We also haul water, and you know about that. We, uh, and when someone calls and they say we're out of water, that means you've got to go. You can't say I'll bring it to you next week. You've got to go today. So I've already got two calls today, so that's what I'm doing this afternoon. Um, tell me about your bread ministry. How did you get started in that? Well, the bread ministry, someone in Golden Valley had already started it, and uh, it wasn't going as well as he hoped. He, maybe his intentions were a little bit more, I'm not sure. Uh, and so Fred got hooked up with him, and this person has, sort of gave it to Fred, and we've been doing it now for five years, Fred and I, and it was, it's seven years total that the bread ministry has been going on. And we drive to uh, Las Vegas Rescue Mission every Saturday, and they load up our trailer with 106 boxes of bread. And, uh, and we distribute them on Saturday, and then we distribute them on Sunday. And I also take bread to our local post office in the RV park because there's a lot of people that are hungry. So uh, that's why it started, and that's why the Lord's had us continue. He, there's a lot of people that need food. And it's, it's a lot of work, but we enjoy it, Victor. Um, if somebody would want to donate some money to your cause, uh, how could they do that? Can they just send it to you? or? Well, that's usually we take cash and we take checks. Um, we are so lucky. Um, how, how can they send you a check? Oh, well, if, they wanted, if they wanted to, uh, we are a 501c3, which you know, and uh -huh. then we, our donations go through an account, uh, and then we use it to, for fuel and different repairs on the truck and whatever we need to make it work. I need, I buy ink, uh, so I can print stickers that we put on all the, la all the, all the loaves of bread. So it's pretty cool. Um, if they wanted to, uh, they can call me at our number, Arizona Bread Ministry. That's our home number, 928-767-3979. And that's what we put on our stickers. Or they can send it to our address. And it works out great. 18321 North Peacock Drive, Golden Springs. 86441. Correct. And oh, that's wonderful! I just I think you're just doing a wonderful. Um, we enjoy job. it. We enjoy it, Victor. And we're called the Arizona Bread Ministry. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, what are the, some of the uh, funny things that happen in your uh, in the movie industry that uh, comes to mind? Some funny things. Yeah. Oh. Fred probably would have better stories about funny things. Uh, for me, it, I took it really seriously. It was, uh, I had to have what they needed when they needed it. And uh, so, I, you know, really I can't think of anything funny um, other than, you, you know, sometimes you can be caught with your pants down because you're not prepared for something. Like if the director says, I want to do this, in the next scene, and you have to be very creative to kind of come up with something that he might need uh, to make that shot. Uh, it's not always easy, you know. Um, we do have a lot of fun on the set because there's a lot of people, but it's really hard work. I noticed um, yourself when uh, you see how people are dressed when you look at them, because I guess in the industry, you know, they have to look a certain way, and the next scene they have to look the same way, like uh, the buttons are in the right place and, you know, this and that. That's called continuity. Oh, really? I didn't know that. There's a word. There's a call. It's called continuity because sometimes what you might do is they might have it scheduled where you might shoot the last scene of the movie first. So you have to make sure that however it's going to look in the end, that's how it, it, it stays continuity-wise, that it looks right in the middle. And when they do things out of order, because it's very rare that they'll shoot anything 
in order from the beginning of the script to the end. That's a rarity. It all, like if you have a bunch of bedroom scenes or a bunch of outdoor scenes, you're all going to do that in one day or a couple of days, and then you're going to shoot the other things, and then you'll edit it all together to, to make it look like it just happened naturally. <laughs> Does that confuse things somewhat? Absolutely, absolutely, because prop people have to worry about continuity. The people that build the set have to worry about it. The script person has to worry about it. That You know, uh, my, my friend was a script supervisor, and we always called her word police because she has to make sure they say what they're supposed to say and that it's the same if they do take after take. So it, it's, it's a really hard job. Wow. Now, you know, Fred, on the other hand, he likes to have a lot of fun on the set, but... His job was when they're rolling, he's got to pay attention. But when they're not rolling, he can he can he can be a lot of fun on a set. Will they take still pictures from one uh, scene to another so they can have the uh, continuity? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I would when I was doing the films, uh, we used a Polaroid camera. Well, now they have digital cameras. They have t cell phones. I, have, I imagine that it's much easier now because you can get things immediate and you can and match that picture right away. Um, I, I don't know what it's like, but I imagine it's a little more creative and it's a lot easier for the people that are working because of the digital age. I, I imagine just the working people like you, on, on, you're not Hollywood, you're working people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're we're working people, you know, and 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 if you can't do your job, there's somebody in line to get it. I guess some of the uh, actors can be jerks and to work with, or well, you know, well, some well, you know, I I don't want to say anything bad without any without any names or well, well, some actors when they're just starting out can have a little bit of an ego and they might be a little harder to work with, but the older ones, the ones who've been around or have always been professional. Uh, Probably my favorite actor that I worked with was Kurt Douglas. He was fantastic, and he knew his lines, and he looked wonderful. He dressed the way he was supposed to and did what he was supposed to, and, you know, it was, it was pretty great. It was pretty great. But some of the younger ones, they think that they can get away with stuff, and it, it, made, it makes everyone's job more difficult. <laughs> well, you told me a story not too long ago about an actor that, he liked the socks that he had to wear. He wanted to take them home. Right, right. He did, and that would that was uh, Henry Winkler, really nice guy, but he had a thing about socks, and it's <laughs> like, okay, you know, all right, so I'll have another pair for you, you know, tonight, so that you can put them on when you get home. And that was just a funny thing that, you know, I don't know if he did it with every movie, but he did it with the movie I worked on. <laughs> Right. And, uh, he liked your socks. <laughs> he liked the socks. He liked the socks I bought him, so that was really good. <laughs> Absolutely. What are they on movies? They, they cater the food, don't they? Well, depending on the budget of the movie, um, some do better than others. You know, if it's a really big movie, they'll have. Uh, they always have something called craft service, so there's food for you to eat and water and. Things to drink and snack on during the day when you're working because the hours are long. You know, we average 16-hour days. Uh, but they have caterers that will be a lunchtime. If it was union or not union, there still was a caterer for you to eat. Your, your um, first meal would be dinner, and then a second meal is if it really went long. And they would usually bring in and out burgers or pizza or something for the second meal. But uh, if it was a really big movie, you'd have a caterer there all day. You know, I was fortunate enough to be on a few of those, not very many. Some of the and, food is better than others, I imagine. <laughs> well, I have to say, all of them, the food was great. You know, that's their job, to, uh, you know, feed a crew. They're going to have good food. I don't think I was ever disappointed with a caterer. They give you a lot of choices. Because so. you, you want to keep the crew happy, right? want to keep the crew happy, absolutely. And that's what they did. Huh. So I had a good time. Well, I hope this helps. Our well, story. okay. Um, well, let's go and uh, we'll make another appointment very soon with Fred. And uh, Absolutely. Now, be, be planning on it. Now, if you talk to Fred, it'll last a little bit longer. Okay, Kathy. 
<laughs> Thank you, man. All right. Thanks. thanks so much for calling. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. This, this is a Sir Bat Jim, the new Sir Bat Jim in Kingman, Arizona. Thank you so much. My name is Victor, and I was your host. Stephen? Okay.